Hello and welcome to another Looney Tunes review video. If you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to follow my journey to review all 1000 Looney Tunes shorts and give this video a like as well. So this is a review for Bosco's Woodland Days, released in 1932. It's the 47th in the series and it's directed by Hugh Harmon. Currently, there's no real release of this cartoon. It's also under copyright. So I have this beautiful opening, but then it's gonna turn into this VHS version right here, which isn't too bad, at least compared to when I first looked at this cartoon. Now, in case you haven't seen this one, it's actually pretty easy to find if you know where to look. <coughs> Daily motion. <coughs> But uh, all that really happens is that you got Bosco and his dog Bruno just playing in the forest. Bosco falls asleep. He is apparently in some kind of a weird place with all elves and then a giant eventually. And yeah, is it a dream or was it real? Okay, so what you're about to see is a re-edit of the original audio commentary I did before I had to take it down as this is a copyrighted cartoon. And thanks to my friend Blue Genocide for that re-edit and helping me out. Also, you'll hear a few new thoughts from me and, of course, a conclusion. This one's probably not going to be that long, but in any case, grab some popcorn and enjoy. <laughs> yes, this print is absolutely awful. Uh, we can barely see some of the details in it, but uh, unfortunately, that's the best I could do. And what do you know, we've actually released, a, we've actually achieved another milestone. This is the last cartoon of 1932. If anything, this lower print quality actually helps with the surrealness of the cartoon, though. I would actually like to see this one restored, as with all Looney Tunes cartoons. I think, um, you know, if it were up to me, I'd release every single one of them on Blu-ray or even 4K for the best of the best, but... That's just me. It's even got a nice chamber pot gag. Hooray. So Bruno's clearly not interested in hide and seek, so now we're going to get to the fun stuff. Well, it's not the last time that um, we would have a surreal take in the Looney Tunes. I mean, you know, Bob Clamper did one cartoon, but this one's quite, quite fun. I mean, I, like I said, I really wish that they did most of the cartoons of this. I mean, or even just, you know, forget the frolicking, just start him off you know he's having a nap in the woods or something and then just you know go to town but again it could be just a cost issue there is look, look how deranged it looks <laughs> love that yeah it must must be a distant cousin so those were my original thoughts back then which Really, there isn't really much to say about this short, but I do have some further observations on this one. I do stand by what I said before, that this short really should have been just Bosco maybe, I don't know, having a nap in the woods, hence Woodland Days, and he then goes to that surreal world, because that's clearly the most interesting part. Here, it just seems like they had an idea for him to play with the dog, and then they wanted to do something fantastical, and that's pretty much it. I wonder if they just simply did this second part first and then just realized they didn't have much of an idea, but, oh, by the way, I gotta show this again. Just, you can't have a Bosco short without a crotch gag. It's happened so many times in these Bosco shorts. Hey, but by the look of his face, maybe he enjoys it. No judgments from me, buddy. Sorry, Bosco. But I truly think that they probably did the second part first and then they just needed to pad it out to fill in the running time. I mentioned the chamber pot already in the original commentary, but, just to point out for those who are really young watching this channel, a chamber pot is what they use uh, in, instead of a toilet. They would keep it under the bed and if they had to go, they just go in the chamber pot. So, glad uh, we've got plumbing now. That's all I'm going to say about that. Now, given that this was made in 1932, there would have been a lot of places in the US and, well, all over the world without actual proper functioning toilets, you know, without indoor plumbing. So they still would have used the chamber pots. Probably the weirdest thing about the beginning part of this cartoon, and that's not saying much, I mean, you have the chamber pot gag, of course, is that Bosco is already bored of his dog. That's a bit odd. You know, the dog's just playing around, and yet you're going to fall asleep. Okay, sure. Now, of course, the harmonizing studio could not compete with Disney in terms of their special effects and cartoons, but this is pretty impressive for the lower budget, i got to say. And I stand by what I said. I'd love to see it's restored to see some of these visuals. And 
you know, there's not much of a story and blah 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 as I keep on saying about these boss goes, but this one at least looks interesting, I gotta say. It's quite inventive at times too. I mean, look, look at that. You got swimming gnomes or whatever they are. <laughs> and Bosco seems not shocked at all, but okay, sure. Now this song that's played on the piano, which of course it's a Bosco short, you gotta have at least one musical bit, right? <laughs> but it's a nice little piece. I don't think it's based off of anything, I think it's its own thing. As I said before in the commentary, I love this giant's design, such a deranged look, and such a shame that he appears and that's pretty much it. It's a real shame. Now Bosco does what would be a later trademark of the Looney Tunes, and that's of course break the fourth wall, and here is saying, you know, is there a doctor in the house? Because this would have been shown in a theatre. At the time there was no television sets. I do like the shot here establishing the giant and how big he is along with he, how he sounds. And Bruno breaks the fourth wall here. Now I know it's hard to hear but he basically says are you listening and that's based off of Tony Wands who had his own radio show and that was his catchphrase. They seem to use that a lot, so Harmon and Isaac must have been pretty big fans of that show. Sadly, this short does not live up to what it could have been. Easily the best part of this short is the later part. It's not even later half, but it's the later third maybe, where he finally goes to sleep and goes into his dream, and then he does all those weird things. And I wish there was a lot more of that, because that would have been way more interesting. Instead, yeah, this one's just a 4 out of 10 for me. I couldn't really be entertained by this. You know, if you want to watch a good Bosco short, watch something like Bosco in person instead. See, there was a Mickey Mouse short called Through the Mirror, which is one of my favorites, where Mickey interacts with all these weird and wonderful things coming to life. And that's what this reminds me of. And I really wish that they just did the whole short in, with this idea would have been at least interesting and something rather unique than the generic, you know, typical Bosco that you would have seen. But Whatever, it is what it is. So as always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, take care.